Most of the kids, when I get them in my classroom, have never been out here. And you heard adults that hadn't been out here, didn't even know that part of the Sonoran Desert could be this green, this lush. Kristen Albon is an environmental educator from Empire High School. And this is the Singuito Wetlands, part of the 42,000-acre La Cienegas National Conservation Area. And the other huge piece of it is that it truly is, it's, it's our watershed. The watershed out here feeds to the Pantano, feeds to the Rialto, feeds to the Santa Cruz. So it's, it, this is the heart of our groundwater and everything that we do in Tucson. In 2000, President Bill Clinton designated Las Cienegas as a national conservation area, protecting this important and unique ecosystem. I didn't really know this was a area and habitat in a really this close to Tucson with the grasslands. It's, it's hot, but it's, it's good work. Jacob Cooper is 16 and a student at City High in downtown Tucson. He's also one of 12 student leaders who are getting their hands dirty in this corner of the desert. And then uh, just wrap your hands around the thicker roots. And... Yeah, it's like... <laughs> and try to keep it in an organized pile so that we can throw it outside of the fence. The problem with these is they suck the moisture out of the pond and make it dry up really fast which is already a problem here in the desert. It's the final day of the Youth Engaged Stewardship Program, which finds students, educators, and volunteers coming together to implement one of several restoration plans designed and led by the students. The fanned, uh, those are the cattail, and these are the ones we're trying to remove. Uh, we have to be careful with these. They're rhizominous, which means the roots go out. So even if you're pulling them, you could still break the root. Like all these are connected by one root channel. So even if you leave the roots, they can still shoot up. The YES program is a partnership between Ironwood Tree Experience, the Bureau of Land Management, Cienega Watershed Partnership, and educator Chris in Albon. So I was here like at seven o'clock and my husband's like, why? I mean, you heard everybody, you drug us out here. And I'm like, you know, is everybody gonna show? Is it gonna happen? It's that moment, is it gonna, and it always comes out and it's so beautiful and wonderful. The Sonoran Desert Toad is actually a true toad instead of a frog, whereas bullfrogs... The three-year-old program seeks to educate and empower these young stewards of nature. They develop leadership skills, experience hands-on field work, and gain a broader, more informed awareness of the wild. It's a little hot right now. I wish I was in shade, but I, I enjoy um, seeing the plants and seeing the, the birds and the bees and all the other little creatures. This is Luca Valente's second year in the program. This year, he's acting as a mentor to the new students. He sees their work as a restoration, one that creates a new legacy for the Singuito wetlands and for future generations. My interest is to see this place go back to what it was before, to reintroduce the plants, the native plants, to make sure that the invasive plants are out, and to make sure that this place stays a wetland. This work will further protect threatened species like the native pupfish, the top minnow, and the Chiricahua leopard frog. But it came with a learning curve. Eight weeks earlier, the students didn't know bulrush from a cattail or milkweed from spike rush. That was the assessment phase, when the YES team was visiting potential project sites where their work could make a difference. One such site is the Sacatone Flats, where drought, soil erosion, and grazing cattle have taken their toll on the land. Because if nothing's done, what might this area look like? Students learn the history and nature of the area from environmental educators, scientists, and experts, like Dr. Jason Field from the University of Arizona's School of Natural Resources and the Environment. Um, they're realizing that it's much more integrated, so it, it goes up to the top of the canopy. Of the Students canopy. listened closely as he explained conditions in the area and what the possible solutions might be. The orientation and assessment allowed them to better understand the challenges and consider their approach. They took time to rest, reflect, and replenish. I, I came out here to um, just experience something new. If you're a mouse or a squirrel or a bat or a bird, 
you better watch out because when you try to get down Dennis the water, Caldwell from the Frog Conservation Project shared his knowledge of the Chiricahua leopard frog and the non-native species that threatened them. They used to be abundant throughout Sienega Creek and in this valley. It's a grassland species from southeastern Arizona. They planted marsh marigolds around Cottonwood Frog Pond, beginning to learn the actual doing part of conservation and preservation. It's larger than the giant water bug. Next stop, Empire Gulch, you need a, net. a riparian creek bed rich with water bugs and critters of all shapes and sizes, another example of the dynamic and complex ecosystem that thrives here. They look more like these two. And this one is actually a giant water bug. Suzanne Drube is the executive director of Ironwood Tree Experience and one of the adult leaders of the YES program. Other larva, so this is a giant water bug, but it's more affectionately known as toe biters. Why is that, Ellie? <laughs> they bite your toe. <laughs> they nip at your toes. Not really. Like and then his legs, he's just pushing off my feet. As they left the gulch, Christian stopped to try some wild mint. The assessment phase ended and the planning phase began. I don't know how to spell it right. It's fine. Robert Rojo is a recent graduate of City High and will be attending the University of Arizona, where he plans to study mechanical engineering. He says he learned about the give and take of collaboration. Being able to speak out and uh, have your ideas and perspectives heard as well as working with groups where you know not just your own ideas seem really cool but actually getting a different perspective and having the chance to work with one another and actually understand uh, everyone's personalities. For Robert, the teamwork, the leadership skills and the environmental education are all part of a foundation he is building for his own legacy. Well my father and my mother are very proud of me, uh, also my little brother. But uh, I'm like the first in my family to graduate from high school and also going to college, so it's something really big. 18-year-old Allie Freiberg Landon also looks to the future, one where this work they are doing lives on. I hope that we create a more resilient environment that allows for future growth so that, like, um, youth volunteers in the future can improve upon our project. On the last day in the Singita wetlands, after weeks of planning and toil, the team can put its work into perspective. This whole group of kids has been working hard all summer and it feels good to get out here and support them. It all adds up to be a big deal, to really um, help save and preserve these places that m may not otherwise be preserved. Today, um, this contact is more important than ever. Uh, it sounds cliche, but they are really our future. And so getting these kids uh, interested in all the life around us and seeing how everything is related is very important for our future. The YES team came to this place for a project, but leave it with a band of newly forged environmental leaders the new keepers of the land. Their actions, their intelligence, their hands, their feet can make these differences, and that's important. And if I can hear a handful of kids say, we did something, that's all I want. And to make it sustainable, knowing that they'll take that and move it on to other pieces of their life. Their vote, their action, their decision when they're being a consumer all makes a difference. And so it's that, that, that little bit of empowerment of, yes, I can make a change and them understanding that they can create and do something. It, it's so powerful that they don't get in the classroom. Until they're hands-on on it, they don't understand that they can create that change and that they have power. This day is that power. 